uh, to the conversation. And then go ahead and remute yourself after that. I think we're watching Brad, just in case you didn't catch that, if you'd go ahead and get yourself muted too, that would be awesome. So um, I'll ask you to start here. Uh, individually, if you would, I'd like you to take a moment and if you have a pen and paper or uh, something you can type on just to jot down. Um, I'd like you to, to identify uh, which regularly scheduled meetings have been most significantly impacted so far by our new way of operating. And that can be either that they've been, op they've been impacted by they're not happening or they've been impacted in the fact that they're less effective than they were. Just take a moment and jot down your idea on which meeting or meetings have been most negatively or most significantly impacted by our remote operation. And it can be either that they're not happening or that the way that they're happening is uh, a challenge now. All right. And I'm going to grab a couple of different samples. So one of the things I'll do throughout this is I'll let you know when I'm going to be coming to you for feedback so you can be prepared to, um, to go and give feedback as we go. So I'm going to, on this one, I'm going to pick uh, JR, Laurie, and, um, and then Scott as well. All right. So JR, Laurie, and Scott will be our uh, volunteers to give us some feedback on this one. So JR, do you want to start us off? Which meeting or meetings have been most significantly impacted? Uh, I'll start off, I'll say the Wednesday meeting. The Wednesday meeting, okay, got it. Yeah, the company-wide meeting. And that's in the fact that now, because it, it's just not taking place uh, right in its traditional format, um, what are you noticing as far as the this most significant impact though? Um, I guess we had, we did a virtual one last week and then this week, um, I don't know if it was just not on the schedule or if it was, because uh, we do them every so often. Um, so that I guess just not clear on if it was supposed to happen and it didn't happen or if it just wasn't on Got the it. week. So I just know it didn't happen. Beautiful. Thanks, brother. Got it. Laurie, that would be you next. And JR, go, yeah, perfect. Thanks. Uh, Laurie, go ahead and unmute yourself. <laughs> oh, I had to do it in a different place. Okay, sorry. Um, the okay. meeting that has not been, has not happened is my um, skill practice meetings. Um, okay. Where I was, I was doing it every week. Half the team would meet and then the other half the team would meet. Um, I think mainly just because I've been focusing on doing the one-on-ones and I felt like that was really important to connect with every person. And to be honest with you, I did some training. I set some training up with the team, um, um, HVAC training with Vic, which after that, it made me realize, wow, I can do this. So mm -hmm. that's really helped me yeah. to realize I can continue this. So. I'm seeing ways that I can make it happen. All right. I think it's awesome. just settling in. Thank you. A lot of it is settling in. Which you're, you're getting right to the, the crux of this meeting and where we're going to go with this pretty quickly here. So thank you. All right. But I just, just want to get a feel. I really need this information to know what is and isn't working. So this is great. And then Scott, if you would. Uh, yeah. So we started doing payroll meetings every Friday morning just to go over the weekend review and then what we can get better at next week. Uh, it's been, it's been okay so far, but I could easily see it as just becoming like a sounding board, like just ideas bouncing around everywhere. Uh, we don't have like great mechanisms to settle on ideas and kind of check boxes and walk down a list. So I kind of just a little unorganized, you know, there's just a, there's a disconnect there. Good. Yeah, got it. Okay, good. So across the board, uh, for those of you out there, how many of you would say that you've dropped off at least um, 
have dropped off in your hosting of some of your regularly scheduled meetings just by a show of hands if you would you've canceled meetings throughout this week that were previously regularly scheduled and i'm just going to keep them up for a sec because i'm going to scan to the next gallery so looks like almost 100 percent of us have at some level had to shift and that's really okay and what i want to start with is i want to commend you that look i what i am very very aware of right now is the level of you know max capacity, if not overwhelm, that each of you are experiencing as it relates to your capacity to keep up with this crisis from a remote capacity. And so to ask you for one more meeting was a big ask for you to be here for this. And the purpose of this meeting is that by the time you leave here, that you're going to be in a position to create more streamlined, more efficient, more effective, regularly held meetings so that the overwhelm starts to dissipate. All right. So if uh, just so you know, that's the goal of getting us together here is to look at three principal things. One, how do we increase the effectiveness and efficiency of our meeting cycles so that we can have um, the regularly scheduled ones become more capable of accomplishing what we need to so that we can handle the other additional duties and overwhelms that are occurring right now. Two, the best practices for remote meetings so that we can really up the level and quality of the engagement and the experience for people. And then three, just some clarity in messaging and messaging cadences that will really help us handle absolute precision messaging right now as we cascade throughout the team. Because what I'm sharing with you here at this moment is that the stakes are high and that the quality of the craftsmanship of our meetings and our messaging must be impeccable to ensure that we thrive during this period together. Okay, so the first thing I would like to ask you to do is to just take a moment. Um, I had asked you to look at the list of uh, meetings that you were, regularly, you were having that were regularly scheduled. And I just want you to force rank one, two, and three. What are the three most important meetings that you either need to resume having or continue having right now? What are the three most important meetings throughout the you know, week with any of your reports that you need to either resume if they've fallen off or you need to continue having? Just go ahead and force rank them right now. Keith, I lost connection there for a second. Could you repeat the question? Yeah, perfect. And well executed, Chris. Thank you for that. So if you would just um, force rank the three most important meetings that you either need to resume having or that you need to continue having right now throughout this in order to assure the highest performance of your teams. And I'm going to be coming to, in this case, I'll come to Chris, to Kevin, and to Tommy for uh, your responses. And everyone may have different ones. I just want to get a feel from you guys. So, Chris, go ahead and unmute yourself. Great. What are your top three that you feel like are critical right now? Uh, my dispatch D10 meetings, uh, my drains D10 uh, meetings, and then my plumbing D10 meetings in that order. Okay. And are they are they still happening, or does any of these need to resume where they were they were interrupted in their cadences? Let's say they need to resume. We we did a very quick version of one, but it was nowhere near what it should have been. Okay, cool, got you. Thank you, uh, Kevin. You're next, there, brother. Uh, I have my drain team meeting, and one v ones, and then my sales team meeting. Got it. Got it. And those are due to resume or you've been able to maintain them so far? I've been maintaining them so far perfectly. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much. And Tommy, why don't you take us to the next? Uh, mine's been my team meetings. Um, I've been to have them, but was kind of limited on what I could do with the other platform we were using. A lot of ours is visual. I mean, as far as anything from, and then the other one is, is I was struggling with how do you keep up with um, in that meeting with, how do you get 
because we did so much, we do so much scripting and pl uh, role playing within our meetings. It's kind of hard to do and be able to monitor and make sure that they're actually doing it and doing it correctly. My other ones, I mean, I've been keeping up with my meetings, but like my one-on-ones, they've kind of, um, they're not as good as what they could be. Okay. Um, and then um, I, I spend most of my time putting fires out and check-ins. I mean, that's about all I've had the capacity to do here lately. Right, right. And thank you for sharing that. And Tommy, that's the, that's the thing I really want to take a look at for each of us is where can we start to amplify the quality of the regularly scheduled meetings and stick to those so that we can reduce the number of, of impromptu and fire fighting check-ins that we're finding ourselves having to respond to. And the goal here is that if we can amplify the quality of the one-on-ones and the team meetings, and we can create some predictive elements within those meetings, anticipation of issues that may arise, then we should be able to in turn uh, reduce the number of check-ins and firefights that we're going to have because we know we're still going to have a lot of them. And so that's what we really want to take a look at. So a couple of thoughts for you guys here um, as it relates. One, I'd like you to take and consider this series of forced rank meetings. And as you look at one, two, and probably three, consider the possibility of creating a set of standards for what it would take for you to change any of those meetings right now, meaning that you set up an absolute commitment to holding those three meetings with a very high bar for the circumstances that would cause you to in any way deviate from those scheduled events. Okay. And so we are literally talking about, you know, stuff that is, that has no capacity to wait, right. And creating a series of circumstances that will allow you to hold true to those scheduled meetings. If you feel those are your three most important, hold them in rarefied air so that they are being protected against nearly any circumstances. And this will allow you to have kind of a preset gauge so as to not become fluid to the natural reaction right now, which is everything's the most important right now. It's really easy to feel overwhelmed that whatever's in front of me is the most important thing right now. And for us to stay ahead of this curve and not become overwhelmed as leaders, we're going to have to be out in front of making some serious decisions about where we hold true to create some semblance of steadiness. Because right now, your team experiencing reliability will be the most impactful sense they can experience as it relates to their comfort. The scariest thing that we're experiencing right now is all of the unknowns and the uncertainties. And but right now, if we can create regular, certain experiences for our team, this will have an amplifying effect. Does that make sense? Give me a little virtual high five if that made sense to you and how, how significant that impact is, okay? So that's, that's why uh, you're getting a sense of urgency for me to create and then have this little gathering here because the quicker we get to the steadiness of these cadences, the quicker we'll start to see the ripple effect of a sense of normalcy in our new operating system as an organization. And again, the stakes are high. So this is a great opportunity. So that's all I want to do there is just force rank those and consider those hallowed and sacred ground that they would be moved only for significant non-negotiable experiences so that we can start to return some steadiness to them. Now, in addition to that, what I would ask you guys to do is take a moment and I want you to think we're going to start first with your one-on-ones. Okay. So any of your one-on-ones and I'd like each of you to just take a moment and write down one new question that we could introduce to the one-on-one -on -one that would help predict and proactively raise potential issues that would then otherwise would have come up as fires that we would need to fight later in the week. So considering our new operating system, what's one new question that we could add to the one-on-one -on -one forms for our team members or for ourselves, however you want to answer it, that would help raise and potentially predict issues that otherwise would have become reactionary issues and measures later on. So each person just now take a moment individually. And if you have a question, you just unmute yourself and let me know. I'll, 
I'll start with Keith real quick was, you know, we got into the, the beginning of this and we were trying to row safety procedures out, but then yet again, it's being pushed down that we need to roll out, but yet stuff's being taken back from us, mm -hmm. not knowing it's been taken from us, going into meetings, not knowing that was some of the stuff that I ran into. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mm -hmm. up at six, you know, five thirty, six o'clock in the morning and start this and all, all, you know, all of a sudden all my materials is basically gone. I mean, because we've done pulled it and that's not what we're rolling out because it wasn't good enough for us mm -hmm. to roll out to them. I understand that part of it, but there was no, that's part of what some of us I think are seeing too is what we're supposed to be rolling out safety wise is, is not there, but then yet again, we're having to roll it out, but we don't know what Got we're it. supposed to be rolling out. Tommy, that's excellent. That's, and I'm going to, I'm going to, hold that for a moment i'm going to file that and and return to that and make sure that i do you'll you, you stay responsible with me on that um, because that's a fair consideration for us to look at is how do we adapt and pivot um, in in the fluidity of the situation and um, i think that's a really fair concept for us to explore so thank you and we'll return to that and then in this particular, I want to focus in this case on the one-on-ones, and I'm not even sure if there's some way that we can answer that question inside of this question, but in our one-on-ones right now, what is a singular question that we could add to our one-on-one -on -one form for our, whether it's the people that are reporting to you or for you yourself, maybe this is the answer. Um, but to go ahead and help to eliminate the potential issues that might come up as as reactive so take a moment Tommy feel free to jot down your idea I was looking for everyone to write down you know what's the one question that we could ask that would help to potentially eliminate some of those and Tommy if you don't mind for the moment go ahead and remute yourself and then we'll come back again so on this one I'm going to go to um, as a heads up here if uh, Sarah I, I'd love to get a response from you um, Jacob and Zach, let's have you three share with us your question that you designed that you think would help to, you know, flesh information to the surface. You cut out on me, Keith. Who was the middle name? It was Sarah, Jacob, and Zach. Thank you yeah. for that, Vic. Um, I wish I had my one-on-one -on -one form in front of me, but the, the thing that I was realizing um, that I think when we have our one-on-one -on -one forms in front of us, if we don't have base camp up also, what kind of gets missed is what are the, I'm just, um, sorry, one second here. What are the observations, insights, ideas, or issues that you, that you saw this week that we should be chatting about or parking in an issues list for the future? Um, Fabulous. Yeah. That's what I got. Fabulous. Okay. So can, and can you see immediately that that question would help to, to really streamline and, and call and prioritize mm -hmm. critical matters. Okay. So please add that to your form immediately. Mm -hmm. That's an outstanding question to be gaining insights from your management team on. All right. Love it. Great. Uh, Jacob. Um, I got what, what is your comfort level? Like, how do you feel going into these customers' homes? Um, maybe someone got coughed on, how did you feel then? Um, mm -hmm. how, how could we better protect you in that situation than you as someone who might have the virus? Good, very good. Now, in this question, Jacob, stay, stay unmuted with me for a moment. I wanna give you just a little, uh, little feedback and potential um, uh, refinement on this that, that will produce potentially higher quality answers, right? So if we ask, how do you feel? This is a very open question and it's gonna consistently invite a potential uncertainty of feeling, right? Can you see that? That if we're asking, you know, how, how do you feel this week? We could be really drawing out, almost creating a context where people feel like they're supposed to be feeling a certain way. So there was a second question you asked in there that I think is really brilliant that could get you more information and help ensure that you don't lead your team members into a particular emotional state and that's what are ways that we could better be protecting you during this time or what 
operational ideas or insights do you have that would improve our functioning during this COVID crisis, right? Would be a really impactful question. Now in that, you'll likely draw any concerns about um, you know, how somebody might be feeling or something that came up. So inevitably that will come out. And this way we're leading them towards a solution oriented mindset versus only an expression of how they might currently be feeling. Does that make sense? Yeah. And does that now with that little bit of feedback, would that still to you um, accomplish the goal of, of creating and gaining information from that, from that, that curiosity? Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. So thank you for hearing that just a little refinement because this is so important right now, team, that we create impactful, high quality questions and engagements that don't lead the team to feeling, you know, into uncertainty, but keep us in a sort of forward thinking solution oriented mindset. So that's fabulous. Thank you. Nice job, Jacob. And thanks for hearing that feedback. Zach, what you got for us, brother? So moving towards this, uh, concept of a virtual ride-along I put how can I uh, best serve you as a tech during these ride-alongs okay beautiful so so using the one-on-one -on -one to ask about the ride-along and, and create some feedback and I love this Zach because this is getting them into the mindset without it being on the spot because now they can think about it here in the one-on-one -on -one about how they're going to approach it inside of the ride-along so this is beautiful now listen, to everybody else, as you're hearing these different questions that may not pertain exactly to you, because each of you, I want you to have variation in your one-on-ones based on your department and your team's needs. Um, but as you're hearing these, please feel free to, be, to borrow them, refine them, shift them, and make sure that you're staying engaged in all of the feedback as uh, we go through these meetings, because there's really powerful stuff within this, okay? So, um, very good. And uh, what uh, at this point, I will open it up. What particular questions or additional feedback do you have or wish to deliver at this moment? I'm going to give about 10 seconds of dead air. If I don't hear anyone, then at that point, I'll move on. But feel free to unmute yourself and chime in for questions or feedback at this moment. I got a couple I'd like to share that might be a benefit. Um, what issues or opportunities do you think you're that do you think are going to come in our future that we should be thinking about now, next week and next month? So just a pre-framing question. So we're getting people thinking ahead and we're talking about stuff. And then my other one was, what are two things you needed my input on that would have gone smoother if you were able to just make the choice on your own? Okay, tell, tell me a little bit more about that question. What's the, the uh, thought there? Routinely, I'm a bottleneck in production and, and as my capacity's um, more and more crammed, I'm just looking at what I, I'm looking for ways to empower people to own decisions more so that I'm not a bottleneck in, in production. So it, if somebody thinks back on their week, where were areas that I slowed down that you felt like would have gone better if my involvement wasn't necessary? And then we can just deeper, like maybe able to give it back, may not, but I, you know, like just Odie and I, I, I'm in an email loop, like, I don't need to be here. And I was like, empowered them, please just get this done and let me know when it's done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's a, there's a, there's a classic management philosophy and I'm just trying to get the exact cadence of it, but it's like, uh, do it and don't tell me, do it and tell me, ask me and then do it. Right. Or like yeah. the three cadences. Yeah. Uh, depending on, you know, sort of different priorities. And so, you know, that sounds like one where it's like, hey, just do it and tell me. Yeah. Right. And so maybe even creating a little bit of a, a recategorization like that might help. Yeah. It's just Beautiful. a purposeful, like, re think back and where, where was I choking this out, you know? And let's just... Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's the question right there. Where did I slow you down this week? Yeah. Where did I slow you down this week? Would be a great leadership question to be asking. Awesome. Absolutely awesome, thank you. Who else uh, with an additional question or wanted to volunteer another idea um, for feedback or uh, to, to help the team out? Go for it, JR. Oh, Odie, you're next, you got it. Odie, take it. Oh wait, JR, no me? Odie. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, you got it. And the only thing I, just for the office side, I just included, I had a couple of questions to add, but the one that I wanted to put out there is asking them, are there any, um, 
you know, processes that you're struggling to digitize and what, what mm. I can do to help with that. Uh, just because we, we, we tend to instill being resourceful and doing, figuring it out on our own. And I, I, I want to make sure that that floor is open to say, it's okay if you can't figure it out, let's find the tools you need to digitize it so it's easier for you. Beautiful. So what processes, and ask it that, I would just make that one modification. What processes mm -hmm. are needing to be digitized or are we struggling to digitize? So that it, again, in, when we ask that question, what? it tells the brain they should have an answer versus are there, which is a yes, no. Okay, cool, beautiful. And JR, you were uh, volunteering, you wanted to add something too. So um, I have, uh, are, there any, are there any changes that you are struggling with or having a hard time adapting to? Okay, excellent. And I would say, again, in this case, you know, what, what changes are you struggling with? And there was something that I noticed in Brad's question that was really interesting. Um, it was, I think you said both, where are you seeing like opportunities or potential challenges? And so one thing to be asking in this question, JR, that again, might really open some stuff up is what improvements have you seen, you know, with the changes we've made so far and what adjustments are you struggling with? So like asking for both sides of that to be examined, to help us flesh out things that like this is, as we're seeing some stuff right now that is absolutely going to improve our overall processes in the future organizationally because we're being forced to do so. And that's pretty cool. And we want to capture those now so that we can bring those forward into the next era with us as well. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. That was, an awesome, that, that was an awesome statement. Can you repeat that Keith? Like that question, what improvements have you been seeing? I like, I love that one. Yeah, I think it was just something like what improvements have, you know, what improvements have you seen um, and what adjustments are we, you know, are you struggling with? Something like that, you know, so it's asking both sides of, I, I mean, I don't know, you got to, we'll keep refining it together. But I think something in the realm of what improvements have you seen um, and or what adjustments are you, uh, are challenging you right now? Where are you excelling or struggling? with the new processes. There you go. Great way to ask it. Yeah. And now that one's where are you excelling? And, and so that's even a different question um, compared to what, like, what have you seen that you like or what adjustments are you really, you know, appreciating right now? So kind of some different ways to, to ask it. And I want you guys to really be empowered to play with these different questions and just keep asking extraordinary questions. What I want you to be really conscious of, is the context that you're creating in these communications. And we're gonna, that's where we're gonna finish today inside of this time together, is how we can really build strong context so that we are framing the conversations that we're having right now so that we can keep everybody laser focused, okay? So we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit here. But what I wanna do now is take a moment and I wanna shift to item number two. And that is the best practices for creating these virtual, um, these virtual meetings and, and trainings as we go. And so what I'm gonna ask you to do right now is I'd like you to identify, take a moment individually and jot down what are six things that you've noticed about this meeting that stand out to you so far, as far as um, how it's been conducted uh, to ensure excellence in participation, what, just anything to ensure it's excellence. What are six things that you've noticed thus far about this particular meeting? All right, and just a heads up, we will come to Michelle, Amanda, and Vic for 
these answers. All right, Michelle, Amanda, and Vic. And we'll grab two each from you. We'll grab two each from you on this. We'll start us off, Michelle. Um, my two that came to mind, um, the, the mute functionality and just super clear who's talking because I, I keep, in my meetings, we keep talking over each other. Um, and just more participation versus a lot of one person talking. Cool. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. So let's not miss that. The mute is critical. All right. So asking the team to be responsible for muting themselves is great. The Zoom function, you can also mute everybody and unmute them if you want. I actually prefer putting it in the hands of our participants. Um, it's just a really, it's, it's again, it's just an expectation of a level of responsibility and it creates a little bit of uh, hyper awareness and engagement from the participant. So I'm a fan of it in that regard. Uh, but of course, you can always mute somebody as needed. And we'll talk a little bit more about how the participation specifically is happening. So cool. Thank you. Um, let's see. Who did I have next? Amanda, I believe, was going to be next. What are a couple of things that you're noticing um, about the meeting? Just that the, you're asking very pointed and direct questions and then getting our feedback and then providing, you know, any adjustments or things that could help. Just any tweaking to any answers, I guess. Cool. And then to kind of what Michelle said in an involving each person, you know, asking specific people for their feedback and then we can all help each other. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, right? And we're still getting to, oh, and by the way, I just, I, I should, this is a mistake on my part. I missed this and this is something I would recommend was to ask you all, are you all in gallery mode? Give me a nod if you're in gallery mode. If not, I want you to go ahead and make the adjustment. You should be seeing a very, like as Odie pointed out last night, a very Brady Bunch-like uh, sort of experience with seeing everybody. And that is also one of the, um, and here I am learning as we go, one of the best practices uh, to ask your team to put their screens on gallery mode as well when you ask them to go ahead and mute themselves because it really creates a very cool experience of being feeling like you're a part of a meeting and that you're in a community here. So, um, so the mute the gallery mode is huge. So thank you very much, Amanda, for that. And then Vic, I'm swinging over to you to uh, get a couple of insights. So I think we've all kind of getting a little repetitious on a couple of things. I'm going to the first one I put actually was that the video allows. Um, Where is the gallery mode real quick? Yeah, you got it. So on my screen, um, it's off on the le upper left-hand side. You sometimes have to click the screen to make um, hidden commands and buttons available. Hey, Chris, look top right, because I think you have the same laptop I do. It's probably showing up the same. No, I'm on my phone. I couldn't get it to work on my laptop. Oh. Gotcha. Okay. And so that might be a challenge. I've not done this yet on the phone. So it may, um, it just probably, what does it do? Switch back and forth from one uh, speaker to another? You can get it to where you have up to four people on the same screen, but that's about it. Okay, cool. So yeah, so there's some screen limitations depending on, I, I think it formats for different screens. So, um, you know, and even that is just a fun thing to do. Like when people are on different devices, just or whatever, you can ask them what it looks like on theirs. And it's like just exploring stuff, you know, in a virtual world. So, um, and, and being aware of the fact that there's going to be different views for different people. Cool. Uh, so Vic, back to uh, your, um, your pieces. So one of the things is, uh, I have a thing for eye contact. So I think the video format is kind of forcing a little bit more of the, of the uh, eye contact. Uh, really good. I've got uh, the same thing that was already said, specific people to interact with your name and people uh, specifically by name, uh, keeping the topic specific, uh, the mutability and, and the gallery mode, I added those notes to it, but uh, the specifics on people and, and topic. Awesome. All right. So, very good. Who else uh, has something that's standing out to them that they've noticed? I'm going to go ahead and put 10 seconds of silence out here for us, and you can unmute yourself and chime in with anything critical you've picked up on. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Keith has used zero unnecessary words. He, he, he came with very 
clear plan about where the meeting was going. Every single, he, I, he's not making this up as he goes. Every single <laughs> directive, he's, he's driving, it's got a pace, it's got a rhythm, and he knows what's happening next. And the instructions are very precise. So the, the pre-planning, it was clear. He has a professional background, appearance, and lighting. Um, those, are the, those are my main ones. Really good. Thank you. Yeah, JR. So I noticed that every time you ask a question, you ask a question and you say you got 10 seconds to answer this. Go ahead. And, uh, okay. Nice. So one of the tricks, one of the tools to this thing, I think you guys can all appreciate how awkward that who'd like to say something and then there's silence that goes on. So just give, again, setting an expectation. I'm going to give you 10 seconds of silence right now. So go ahead and jump in. That way the silence isn't even that weird because everyone knows it's going to end in 10 seconds anyway. Anyone can wait 10 seconds. So just creating that expectation and then it creates a window and you, what you're noticing is people actually jump in quicker because they know that they've got a limited amount of time to jump in. So that's a, a great tool. Nice pick up there as well. Who else would like to add something? Another few seconds here. Okay, beautiful. So uh, those are some of the keys and I wanna share with you, um, and some of these will be repetitive, but indeed, uh, let's think about our lighting, okay? Right now, guys, I wanna just talk about the optics of our leadership, okay? Vic spoke to this, and actually this is something that I am I'm working on even getting better equipment because I wanna show you something right now. Um, when I'm looking at, so I'm looking dead at the middle of my screen, Odie, I'm looking at you right now, believe it or not, and, um, and, but it doesn't look like I'm looking at you, does it? It looks like I'm looking over here, off to the right, right? Because that's the position of my, my current uh, camera. And because it's over here. So in order for me to make eye contact with you, I have to actually look at a spot that isn't looking at anyone. But I've become aware of this. So when I've needed to, I adjust and I deliver the message over here as best as I can. And this is very different than being over here. And this is significantly different than being, you know, over here and typing here while I've got a camera over here. So we need to start to make adjustments in our body language and our positioning in the screen, the lighting. We want to make sure that we're sitting in a nice space in the screen. Look at the difference between, right? There's this versus, you know, me as a leader. And now, you know, I'm sitting down and I'm, I'm over here, right? And I'm having this conversation with you. And it's like, you know, I mean, it's a completely different experience of who I am to you and how I'm showing up inside that imagery. So as you guys are starting to get your feel for these one-on-ones and everything else, thinking about. By the way, Zoom allows you to actually use some really cool backgrounds if you want. You can create your own and create that as a background if you don't have a great space or, or image behind you. But then being just present, being well lit. I replaced some light bulbs earlier because a light bulb went out on me. I'm like, no way am I not going to be well lit in here. So I've got some more equipment coming in to really enhance the professionalism of it because this is now my new world for training, right? I got to figure out how to make this stuff extraordinary. I never did this before this week. I never hosted Zoom meetings. So we got to keep adapting and overcoming. So um, that was one of the pieces, really well lit, aware of your positioning, your framing, your eye contact, knowing where your camera is so that you are present and not off screen looking at other stuff or doing other stuff. Odie, look, check out Odie. Yes. Yes. Give her everybody a virtual round of applause, silent applause right now. Well done. All right. And so that's another thing that we get to do inside of these meetings is, you know, stuff like making this fun, like a silent round of applause is fun and, and interactive. I'll say, hey, go ahead and nod if you're with me. All right. I've done stuff that's just been stupid, like blink twice if that's a yes. Like, you know, just stuff like that where I'm having fun with people. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Give me an air five, whatever. And again, it's just a level of engagement that's creating some energy and bring us all together at a time that we can't be together. So it really matters well. Um, additionally, what you're noticing is I'm letting the person, the people know who's going to come next, right? So that there's not a, uh, it's not on the spot. I give the question to everyone, let them know what's going to come next. Sometimes I might even say, and by the way, on your feedback, be prepared. I might engage in, and have some refinements or some ideas or some coaching for you. So just be prepared for that. Just try to create as safe an environment as possible in a virtual setting. 
uh, the additional items. Let me see. Oh, very important. Be in the meeting a few minutes ahead of time so that you can greet people when they arrive. Don't have them arrive into a dead space. Then they're creating the context of the meeting. They're having conversations about whatever. Be there to greet them just like you would in a real meeting so that they know you were prepared and ready for them as much as you can. And then uh, I'd already mentioned the participant muting and the gallery view are just really cool elements to help um, improve and have, have fun. And if you want to do, you know, you can greet people with a fun background just for a minute, you know, and then take it down and shift it if that's what makes the most sense or whatever else. And, um, and just be thinking about, you know, your positioning and what's comfortable and, and, uh, and, and your posture inside of this. Okay. So this is no reason to lose our participant centered methodology right now. And so, you know, Tommy, you had previously brought up the potential for like skill practice and stuff like that, absolutely a great opportunity. Let's take two minutes in skill practice to greet. In this one, I'm gonna have, you know, it's gonna be Michelle and JR. You're gonna be our two team members skill practicing the greet together. And I'm gonna ask Amanda and Laurie, you two are gonna be taking careful notes, you know, and coming back with three things that you really liked and one thing that you think will take it up a notch. And boom, we've got a skill practice right here live on the screen. And we can be utilizing this sort of a format to create interaction. All right. On this uh, topic and about to transition, so I'm gonna give another uh, final 10 second space here for any questions. Uh, if you've got any specific questions about how you might want to uh, enact something or any final comments or additions that you'd like to make. So in the past, we had um, got away from doing like rolling in front of people due to the fact that we had some repercussions come out of it later on with people not performing the way they should have or thought they were being on or that aspect of it. Um, how do you, how do you control that into the aspect before you start uh, creating issues within, you know, people pick? Fabulous. Yeah. Fabulous question. I want to first acknowledge and just that your, your commitment to honoring the traditions of participant methodology and, and keeping people safe. That's beautiful. Brad, I think I saw you raise your hand. Did you have a thought on this? Yeah, I, I haven't had a chance to tell anybody this, but it, it's popped in my head. I think before your meeting, you could assign learning partners and make sure they've got each other's cell phones re ready to go. And you could actually give the demonstration, have somebody be your your customer, you demo the, the deal, and then uh, say, all right, we're going to check in in this many minutes and, ha and have a timer go up, do screen share, and call your partner and practice it two times each. This is going to require an extraordinary amount of preparation. You're going to have to know how long it's going to take. And you give them exactly that much time for them to each take a turn and tell them that. Like you literally have six minutes and 30 seconds to each run through this. You have that much time. So no dicking around. Just do it. And uh, I'm going to demo it, and then you're going to call your partner, you're going to answer, and you're going to skill practice. We're going to meet back here, and I'm going to put a timer on the window so you can see the timer. Cool. Really cool. And I got something even uh, exciting that that just prompted me to think of. I'm working on this right now. I don't have it fully formed, and I bet I, I have a feeling like Odie would be able to figure this out super quick like she already did with the background. Um, Zoom allows you to create breakout rooms. So you can actually create up to 50 different breakout rooms inside of Zoom where you can pair or triple people off and have them go work on something and then bring them back. So that is gonna be an unbelievable feature that will get deployed. And maybe I'll just make a, a request to Odie. Maybe Odie, you and I could, could sync up on that to get everybody clear on how to do that. And Tommy, then you would be able to actually send guys off and send your team off to, you know, paired up, you can pick them and send them off and have them go practice kind of to one another where no one else is hearing it and then bring the whole group back for debrief purposes. You gonna give me a thumbs up on that, Tommy? Jesus, I feel like that was a really strong uh, answer for you. It is. <laughs> I was trying to figure out where to hear and just kind of picking through it real fast and I just, um, yeah, I'll have to read up on it. 
Yeah, yeah, we'll find it. Okay, so don't let's not get lost in that right now because that'll be something. Odie and I'll get that. I bet you will. Odie will probably make some genius video for you on how to do it and make it all beautiful, and that'll be a, a tremendous transition that we'll make organizationally to to have world class training going on even virtually. Right? This is the this is the beauty of this stuff. It's forcing us in, forcing me, forcing us into a new way of being resourceful. So now. With that said, in the interim, Tommy, the thing is, you know, if you notice, I'm letting people know that they're coming next. Clearly, I'm getting to everybody, you know, along the way. So you're going to naturally create some understanding and some empathy for each other because eventually it's going to be your turn that you're on camera and just sharing, you know, hey, guys, just be prepared. This is now, first of all, you know, what's our even asking? This is really important. Um, if you think back, uh, if you think back to the exercise that most of us were part of in um, the retreat that we did when we, uh, you know, we, we kind of all shared something that was personal to us, right? And we, we wrote it down. One of the things I did before that was I asked you guys, how will you handle this exercise? How will you react to what you hear? And I let you all create your standard for how you were going to treat each other and treat the information. You guys remember that? Give me a little head nod if that if that's ringing a bell. Okay, so even just asking the group, hey guys, we're gonna do some skill practicing remotely today, right? So I just want to hear, and you know, what's your commitment to the type of environment you want to create for your teammates, for your brothers and sisters here, to make sure that we, you know, we're putting ourselves out there. We're doing some crazy stuff. We're doing this virtually right now. What can we expect from each of you? Is the way that you're gonna treat your colleagues during this, you know, training? Um, to ensure that people walk out of here feeling bigger, better, and, and you know, ready to go out there and be the best version of themselves. So use of asking and framing for, for contextual purposes will also help to keep your team safe during this stuff. Cool. All right. So part two, that's it. That was our best practices segment. Um, just go ahead and take one moment, 30 seconds right now, jot down the most important takeaways from the best practices segment for you. Uh, and these are just going to be for you. I'm not going to ask anyone to share them. I just want to make sure you can get a moment to reflect and, and make sure you capture these ideas. All right. Very cool. Thank you very much. And lastly, I'm going to give you three items here. I want you to go ahead and write these down. Three items. Just jot these down. Okay. Radiant employees is item number one. Radiant employees, item number one. Radiant, the business, item number two. And Radiant, the customer, Radiant customers, item number three. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you in a moment, I'm going to ask you to force rank these three items in order of priority. Employee the company, the customer, right? And I'll just ask you to raise your hand. Nobody's wrong here, so we're just having fun. I wanna get a poll, but I'll ask you to raise your hand if you've put this as your top item, all right? So uh, priority-wise, top item, uh, raise your hand if you said radiant customers. Raise your hand if you said radiant customers as your top priority, okay? Raise your hand if you said Radiant as a company as your top priority. Radiant as a company as your top priority. And lastly, Radiant employees as your top priority. Okay, 
top priority. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so we had some variation in there and all three are perfectly acceptable because I didn't give you a ton of context for what I mean. But what I do wanna share with you is the cadence in which our communications should be structured so as to support the success of all three of those things equally, all right? And that is to say that the Radiant employee should be our number one concern in our communication cadence. The Radiant customer becomes number two. Radiant the company becomes number three. Now let me share with you how this sounds. Okay. In an expression with, uh, let's talk about just anything that might be going on. The perp, ah, if you look at the, even the message that we created for the town hall last night, one of the things that we looked at was we said, we're going to host a town hall in order to update you on ongoing and coming measures of safety to protect you, the employees of Radiant, as you continue to do this critical work in our community, serving our customers to help drive Radiant successfully through this challenging time. Okay, now I'm gonna ask an open question to anyone who wants to jump in and answer it. What is it about that cadence and what you just heard that makes it so critically important that it's structured in that way? What is it that you heard in there that makes it so critically important as to how it's structured that way? If you take care of your employees, they'll take care of your customers. In essence, we'll take care of the business. Gorgeous, right? So it actually just makes sense. So we can say it with integrity, right? We got to take care of these employees. That's the only way we can possibly take care of these customers. And that's the only way we can continue to, continue to thrive organizationally. Cool. Who else would like to add something to what they heard within that or anything that's jumping out at them about that? It sounds like one big circle of service, right? Beautiful, beautiful, all right? And here's the other area that I would offer. This becomes critically important. I want us to listen through this same cadence. When we're listening to our employees, I wanna think about them first then their capacity to serve our customer second and then in turn realizing that that's critical to the success of the organization third all right so for example if i have somebody come to me and tell me that they're really feeling uncomfortable you know jacob talked about this a little earlier really feeling uncomfortable right now running service calls and I'm listening to them from the standpoint of I've got to get them out there to serve, right? Or I get, man, if I don't do this, my job's going to be in jeopardy or Radiant's going to be in jeopardy. And that's the way that I'm hearing them. I'm going to create a massive fissure and, and misalignment with that person because I'm not going to be able to align with them. I'm not going to be able to align with them. And so what becomes critical here is that we actually change the cadence of our listening especially in these difficult conversations. Guys, I want you to be clear on something. You're going to have people say some banana shit to you over the next few weeks. Like crazy stuff. You're going to have people demanding, you know, new pay scales or, you know, saying nutty stuff about what we think that, you know, the, the company should be doing and reacting in certain ways that are going to be so far misaligned from you it's going to be really hard to even not just like have a reaction to them. And so here's the key inside of this, this listening is when you have somebody come to you, for example, we've had the topic of hazard pay come up, right? Hazard pay came up. Now, you know, that might seem crazy to you. That might seem totally logical to you, it, it, but it's possible that in a particular space, the way that that comes up could really catch you off guard. But, if we use this cadence and this way of listening, then here's, and here's how this works. I'm gonna give it to you in this, this way. We're gonna first align, no, excuse me, first acknowledge, then align, and then reframe. Acknowledge, align, and reframe.
So somebody says to me, well, let me give you another second to write that down. Acknowledge, align, and reframe. Okay. Somebody comes to me and says, hey, Keith, you know, I think we should be getting hazard pay, right? I think we should be getting hazard pay. And I'm going to hear that. And the first thing I'm going to do, thinking of the employee, is I'm going to align. Acknowledge. Excuse me. Gosh. I'm going to acknowledge. And I'm going to say, man, I really hear where you're coming from. I hear you. Okay. Or I can get that. Or I can understand that. Right. And then I'm going to align. I'm going to say, you know, we've actually been giving a tremendous amount of thought to the extraordinary measures uh, that are being taken and all that's being asked. Um, from an organizational standpoint right now of each and every one of our employees while well, you guys are out there doing this critical work. And then we're going to reframe. Okay. I'm going to say, and within that consideration, you know, we have a few things that we're, we're looking at. You know, one of them is that we don't want, you know, we have a responsibility to ensure that this business is in a, really solid spot on the other side of this crisis so that our organization still continues to offer exceptional work for each and every one of our employees. And so although we are fluid in our decision making and constantly reevaluating, right now we feel like we're we're offering a fair compensation at the moment and we totally understand if somebody doesn't feel comfortable engaging in this current environment. Right? And so there's the idea of the reframe occurs when we let them know the bigger picture about making sure we protect the organization so that there's work here for all of us on the other side of this crisis or as we navigate through this crisis. So we acknowledge the person, we align with the person to tell them we're thinking similarly, and then we reframe to help them see a different picture that previously might not have been available to them. All right, so as you're kind of both in our listening in our communication, guys, the stakes are higher than ever right now in the quality of our communication. And I, I look at that company value of, um, of craftsmanship. And I want us as leaders to think about our communication is our craftsmanship. We are threading the needle. We are playing a game of millimeters to honor and serve our team members, to be transparent with them regarding these legitimate concerns and yet still foster an environment that provides the opportunity for success and service to these extraordinary times for our, the critical work that we're doing in the community. And so it's real of ethical influence be at the highest level right now from this leadership team. So we're coming up on the end of our time here together as I've shared that with you, but I want to just create the space right now for any final feedback or questions or clarifications on anything that we touched on throughout the, the meeting here. And by the way, anyone who has an obligation right now, go be on time for that. I, I'm running a minute or two late, so that's, up, that's yours. I totally understand. But what final feedback, questions, or clarifications? Uh, let's start with this. Questions or clarifications first. Okay. So, oh, oh go ahead, JR. Sorry. I was having trouble unmuting. Um, how, what, my question is, how would you, <clears throat> if you're going to whiteboard stuff, how, how would you, um, how would you whiteboard stuff? Just like that? Yeah, um, the thing to be heads up on, though, if I'm not mistaken, um, I'll just hold, uh, Hey, Keith, quick idea. Brad actually sent through the notes on the meeting because I was thinking about this too. And I thought that'd be is it? a platform. That yeah, yeah. Oh, totally. Th that doesn't That's backwards, you right? View. You can't see it unless you go to a speaker view. I think there's a whiteboard function on freaking Zoom. So the, I, I'd have yeah, to. Yeah, so one, I, I just want to. I just, I just want to get an answer on this. Can someone tell me if that's backwards? It's backwards on my screen. Is it backwards? It is not backwards, is it but it is difficult to read. Yeah, okay. It's financial. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, okay, good. So you can see it. I just want, because it's actually backwards on my screen when I yeah. look at it. So that's interesting. Um, but 
uh, yes, you can, so you can, there's a whiteboard feature on Zoom. You can share your screen on Zoom and you could type um, or draw if you've got that um, option. And, uh, and you can also just have a whiteboard in the background, which is super fun too. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. But yeah, to the previous point on gallery, it could be, uh, it could be tricky. Nice, Odie, look at you. Golly. Where'd you find that? Brilliant. <laughs> uh, that's brilliant just go to um, really well done where, where it says share screen there's an option that says whiteboard awesome beautiful learning I, together i didn't even know that was possible like that brad yeah i would like to offer up i'll be available um any time this weekend if anybody wants to set up a meeting and just have a, a talk through on um setting up your meetings for early in the week. It'll be easier for me to do it over the weekend if you guys wanna get dialed in and prepared, uh, but I'd be, I'm here, I would love to help you. So after after the bit of a fiasco awesome. on mine yesterday, are we, are we deciding that Zoom is just gonna be the better method to do uh, most group meetings? I think so. I yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think you should try it, um, try it out with your team and let's, it would be really nice to not learn that at the meeting, uh, to maybe even just right. do a trial run, um, you know, just say, hey guys, let's let's all link in and we're not doing a meeting, we're just, uh, <laughs> we're just uh, testing the, uh, the equipment. <laughs> That's JR, good. brilliant, JR's new background, this is amazing. Amazing yes. having fun right now in the middle of all this. I'm really proud of you guys. That's it, man. And that's the thing. That's what's so beautiful about this. We can really make this extraordinary. These meetings are fun. Like this was a good meeting, right? Like this is solid stuff that we're getting to do together. And, and it's really going to work. It's going to be extra exceptional. And, um, and so, yeah, Brad. Yeah, I was just going to point out, like, um, I really, um, I, I got sloppy in the last two weeks. And, and Keith uh, pointed out to me, this need to really get more precise. And then I can, there's so many inefficiencies going on just throughout our whole organization, because if we were using, we just need to be thinking ahead more and being way more precise with our, uh, we've caught it with uh, the parts. Guys don't know how they're going to get all their safety stuff. Uh, we don't have built precise communication about halos. We haven't, you know, and then we get, and then there's things we haven't thought of, right? And so, like, I'm on the fly, and they're like, are you screening calls? And then I punt to Chris, and Chris is like, I don't know what you're fucking asking me. And we bounced it around. We didn't have precise answers. And it, our team really needs us to be fucking on it. And that's, this is, it, the more dialed up we get on this, and, and, and we're really on code as a team, and, and really purposeful in what we're saying, we're going to get less pushback. We're gonna get more efficiency. We won't have to have so many damn conversations, and that's what's killing all of us. Is we're just, yeah. and, and then people are getting mixed messages. It's a fucking mess. So uh, just as a team, we just have to be really disciplined about: is this message going to get me questions back, and and does it serve those three needs? Is am I really looking out for the employee in this communication? So this is super valuable, and I think it's gonna be a big time saver for all of us. That's thank you for saying that and for seeing that because I was so nervous like calling the meeting in the midst of all the meetings you're having and I was just my deepest belief and hope was that this one meeting would actually free up more time for all of you um, rather than take more of it. So thank you for making yourselves available and uh, if you would I want you to just jot down what's your number one takeaway from this meeting? What's your number one takeaway from this meeting? Any, any of the three, we, we covered three different areas, essentially. What's the number one takeaway? Go ahead and write it down. All right, and just a quick answer. Let's keep it to 10 seconds or less. <laughs> hey, 10 Keith. seconds or less, and I'll go ahead and start, uh, yeah. Um, I was, it's not time yet, right? I, I spoke in too soon. What's that? I was going to give what my number oh. one takeaway was. We're still in 10 seconds. Do but, it. Uh, um, Do it, Elton. So, you'll, you'll be our starter, and then I'll 
call them out. Okay. Uh, framing questions. That's something I think I, I can work on something I want to learn more how to do. And I'm going to like, make sure I try to master it or will master awesome. it. Awesome. Elton, you pick who goes next. Uh, Chris. Um, I think I like the acknowledge, align, and reframe as far as communication with employees and um, uh, more specifically keeping the employee and, you know, the employee business and the, and the uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the employee and the customers and the business in the right um, order because I, I tend to skip straight to business. Cool, man. Good for you. Thank you. Pick your next uh, partner. Let's go, uh, Lori. There. Um, definitely a new way to do my skill practice. I awesome. Can, I can do it and line it all up. I'm excited about that. Beautiful. Thank you. Who's your next? JR. Uh, I'm a big fan of the virtual high five. Uh, I think that was that was killer. Let me get a virtual high five, everybody. <laughs> yeah, that was that was huge. Beautiful. Pick your next teammate. Uh, Brad. Uh, JR's background was probably my best takeaway, but not, honestly, getting a, an outline, I posted it up there. You guys could copy and paste it, and then obviously, it's not the outline. You guys have your own takeaways, but I just wanted to capture something. It would be great if somebody took point on this and um, and just really created a, a clean bullet point how to run a great Zoom meeting and then shared that with the team for us to collaborate on. I would love to see that um, happen. Odie will do it. Ah, uh, you're awesome, Odie. Thank you. And if you want to leave a meeting and nobody will know, you just do that. You gotta learn how to, how to fade into it in the exact same way. Uh, All right, Amanda. I really love the idea of making our communication our craftsmanship, but this would also lead to my meetings. I feel like my communication personally has been all over the place. So really getting the expectations clear and what I'm trying to communicate clear so there's no misunderstandings. Awesome. Who's next? Odie. Use clear and minimal words. Well done. Although we need who's next. <laughs> One more uh, word. Jacob. Thanks. Uh, I like consistency with everything being everywhere right now. Um, I think having the employees um, and keeping a consistent meeting with someone helps, you know, them hold on to something. Our lone white wants a little bit of consistency back in his world. That makes a lot of sense, brother. I love it. Thank you. Who's next? Pick your next uh, teammate. Uh, Zach. For some reason, we're not hearing you there, bud. It looks like you unmuted, but we cannot hear you. All right, everyone just tells Zach that was really profound and well done, even though we didn't hear him. Let's... <laughs> Someone shoot him a message and let him know we didn't hear him. Uh, I'll go ahead and pick um, Sarah. You go next for us. Yeah, I just think, you know, going back to, could you mute your shirt? Sorry. Just going back to, um, professional craftsmanship. This is the new world that we're in and we need to be masters of this technology. I've learned a lot in this, this one hour and it's been very helpful and we can really up our game. And I think what that is going to convey to our team members is going to be huge. And, and I love the fact that we're going to be able to become more effective and reduce the number of meetings. So I'm Thank you. that. Awesome. There's a few people left. Uh, pick our next team member there, Sarah, uh, who's left to go. Let's see. Could we hear from, I'm so sorry. I'm losing track. 
That's okay. This is a tough game to keep track of. I think we got Vic still left. Yep. To go, yeah. We picked Vic. All right. Vic. You guys, were you guys able to hear me or no? No, there we go, Zach. We just pretended okay. that what you said was brilliant. Like, we all applauded that was you. Quick. <laughs> uh, so yeah, sorry about that. I guess my mic was off. Uh, how uh, thing that I came up was the questions asking in the one on one and trying awesome. to solve uh, problems before they arise. Beautiful, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Very good, see, Scott. Uh, yeah, I think the, the overall organization and respect to the floor, I think is huge. Just the calling out who should speak next and, you know, getting the, the set parameters that not everyone talks at the same time. And it's just a free for all. So, I mean, this was just so much more organized. And I love it, Chris. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. I think the two remaining are Vic and Tommy. So go ahead and pick who is next. Scott, who do you want to go to next? All right, I'm just going to go ahead. Vic was going to go anyway. Good. Vic, you're next. Uh, mine was going to be the, the some keys about running a good meeting. Uh, one of them being that my two takeaways I put out of that were going to be uh, screen presence. Being casual with each other is one thing, you know, whether we're, you know, slouching in a chair. But if uh, if it's with a group, it's better if it's your subordinates, especially if you're having that, that presence. The other thing is going to be eye contact, camera awareness for, for sure. Great, 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 great. And by the way, guys, please, when you see each other in these meetings, let the other person know if there's something they may not realize. They, they might not know that they're really dark or that they're really, you know, that there's a glare in the background or whatever, like give each other feedback to help each other out on the best. Yeah, yeah and, and I'm, uh, we, we had that <laughs> conversation about, uh, and we're learning about how to do this in the same room. I love that you guys are in the uh, same room. I, that is so thinking we're all too. hiding and we need to, um, we need to really present ourselves professionally here. Um, so I really want to see that bar high. I'd like to see callers. I would like to see upright at a, at a place that's, uh, and, and just elevate your game, please. This is, we're, our bodies and our, our stance, our level of comfort, it's communicating a message. Everything, we're in, and we have, we've lost so much now, we have to make up all the ground that we can control. We need to own that shit. This is, this is really important right now. I, I really expect a high level of bar in, in appearance and lighting and things of that. It's just our team deserves that level of uh, consideration before we go into these meetings. Awesome. All right. Um, I think Tommy and then I did I miss Kevin too so we need Tommy and then Kevin I think that's everyone but if we missed you just speak up it's we're keeping track of a lot of people so Tommy I think mine's going to be more of the scheduling the content and the controlling of the of the actual meeting and I think the other part of it is just learning the platform as far as zoom and how to control it it's, cool. it's something I'm gonna have to play with this weekend well there's one thing I know about you brother I know you are adaptable, so I'm excited to see what you come up with next, man. It's going to be awesome. All right, Kevin, take us home. I think that's it, and then we'll be locked and loaded. Yeah, you know, honestly, I, I think I've probably taken away everything is, is on this meeting. I mean, I, I like to I hold myself to super high standards when it comes to holding a meeting, and, and I want to deliver excellence at all times. I mean, I feel like my team deserves it, but at the same time, too, I'm just I'm hard on myself because I want to make sure they get something out of it. So this entire meeting for me has been my takeaway. Just I've taken so many notes, and I know how to elevate my game drastically from this meeting. So it's like my lighted background here, like all my beautiful windows in the house that take me out of the picture. but. Um, I didn't think about those things before, so there's there's a lot that I've got. I've got some awesome. work to do. You guys are wonderful. Thank you so much. In the midst of this extraordinary effort that you've put forth, and just everything that you've got going on, it means the world to me to to give me this platform and to give me your time in the midst of all the other things that you guys had going. It really is a tremendous honor to get to do this work with you, and I'm so proud of all of you and what you're up to um, and the way that you are uh, conducting yourselves during this time. So my immense gratitude, I'm here for you. Look forward to continuing our one-on-ones and, um, 
and continuing to develop as we go. And uh, guys, we're going to have some more training now because it's we're going to really get dialed in. And I think you can see we can make this truly worth being a part of. So once again, with all my love from Minnesota, guys, you take good care of yourselves, be safe, and uh, have a great weekend. All right? You really, you earned it. You earned it. Two clap. Thank you. Very cool. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Bye, guys. Yeah. Bye.